dear guests, welcome to the part two of this conference, The Fashion Seeds. During this part of the conference, we will align more closely with fashion and fashion-related areas like textiles and accessories. The relevance of the field in connection with sustainable design is especially eminent as the impact of the respective industry has on planetary boundaries is one of the most disruptive ones and taking action imminent. I am Birat Bupart, uh, head of fashion department at the Estonian Academy of Arts, and I will be moderating this part of the event. I will also provide you with a bit more human substance on the stage, as during these turbulent times, many of our speakers can be with us today virtually. Nevertheless, we believe these new conditions are a great testbed for cultivating change and creating a better future through um, deliberated and well-considered design choices. Now, it is my pleasure to invite on stage Red Aus, a renowned practitioner of sustainable practices, a designer, a brand owner, and senior lecturer, senior researcher at ECA for some welcoming words. Hello, nice to see you all here. Um, really, there is a lot of space where you could sit. Please come here. So, uh, welcome. I'm really happy to see you all here. Um, I would like to give you some facts. Facts about the fashion industry and uh, fashion and textile industry. That we could a little bit start to talk about these issues because the second part of the day is really focusing to the textile and fashion industry. So, I wrote down some facts for you and for myself as well. So, World Bank says every year fashion industry uses 93 billion cubic meters of water, enough to meet the consumption needs of 5 million people. Around 20% of wastewater worldwide comes from fabric tying and treatment. At the total fiber input used for clothing, 87% is incinerated or disposed in a landfill. The fashion industry is responsible for 10% of annual global carbon emissions, more than all international flights and maritime shipping combined. At this pace, the fashion industry's greenhouse gas emissions will surge more than 50% by 2030. Every year, half a million tons of plastic microfibers are dumped into the ocean the equivalent of 50 billion plastic bottles. The textile sector produces 53 million tons of clothing fibers each year, of which over 97% is virgin feedstock, and more than half of them are plastic-based fibers made of oil. Uh, the Ellen MacArthur Foundation says, that it's estimated that more than 500 billion dollars in value is lost every year due to under, under utilized clothing and lack of recycling. So clothes are used for a short time, after which 75% of them are sent to the landfills or incinerated. We all know that EU launched the Green Deal this year and uh, we can read from that paper that actually in EU, only 25% uh, of used clothes are collected and only 1% of collected clothes is recycled back. So I think we have quite a many problems and we have to solve in the industry. And the main question for us today is what kind of designer is needed for this kind of change? So we are really welcome to listen all our talks and think with us, how should we solve the problem in the industry? Thank you. Thank you, Red. Next up is our keynote speaker, 
Virjokäriäinen. She will be joining us online. Virjo is the Professor of Practice and Head of Education at Aalto University. Her areas of expertise cover interdisciplinary collaborations, bio-based materials, textile design, design for sustainab sustainability, of course, and also she is the founder of Chem Arts Project. So please, Birio, the screens are yours. Thank you. I will share my screen for you to see what I'm going to say. Should be okay now, so I hope that you are you are able to see it. Yes, we can see you well. Great, thank you. Uh, yes, I'm sitting here in very windy Helsinki currently. We have a little bit storm here, and uh, I can see from my window. It's really really strange weather. Um, thanks for in inviting me to to talk for this event. I'm really happy, and I, it would have been great to be there with you. It's, but as you know, the situation is very special nowadays and uh, we just need to cope with it in different ways. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the, the collaborate, my, my title is Collaborating for Sustainable Materials. And um, uh, like Reet was saying, or explaining these, these uh, huge issue, issues that our uh, industry is currently facing, uh, we really need to find ways how to tackle tackle these issues. And um, I also want to talk about this collaboration a little bit because it's it's crucial. So we can't, as designers or other professionals, solve these issues alone. And by the way, in this in this in this photo in this image, you can see a very nice microbial cellulose <laughs> grown by by Ingvil Fossheim, who is nowadays a doctoral candidate, also at Aalto University. So, like like Red was describing, this uh, situation is unbearable. The overconsumption over is uh, it's it's we we can't take it anymore. We have the the raw material the raw materials are. Some of them are becoming very limited and, and yes, the list of environmental problems that we are facing seems to be endless currently. But what are the potential pathways that we can, what, what can we do? What are the potential pathways, especially in the field of materials? What kind of materials we should need, how they are made of, uh, how they should be produced, how they should be used to create a more sustainable uh, material world? And, and again, this material issue is only one part of the big, uh, big, uh, huge, huge entity where we have all these aspects of, of uh, sustainability that needs to be tackled. So I'm talking, I'm focusing only on, on this material side today. Uh, to help, uh, because, because there are so many things that we need to um, address to and understand, I've been I started to categorize these, these potential pathways somehow that to, to make them more understandable for myself and for others. So there are kind of a five concepts that I often think uh, when talking of these uh, new materials and transformation of, of materials towards more sustainable future. So there are plenty of renewable raw materials that are currently uh, um, researched that could be maybe used as a raw material in the future. Like, like Red already mentioned, this recycling, uh, whether it's mechanically, chemically, or with enzymes, it's crucial, of course. We need to proceed, proceed with that. Um, there's also plenty of interest to reinvent traditional skills and knowledge also, and also the focus uh, to, to have the crafts and, and all these um, traditional ways to do and use. Um, then there's plenty of talk of biofabrication, which means uh, mainly, mainly it's used as when, when these materials are grown, new materials are grown by using biological processes, uh, usually with some kind of biotechnologies. So it's not only about the growing things by yourself at home or some kombucha or so, but it's really about the biotechnologies as well, so industrial processes. 
Uh, then the, 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 the last concept is this uh, designing these materials from the scratch. So uh, really a very technical approach. We are using this synthetic biology already now and, and genetic modifications and so on to, to develop something that is not existing currently or to imitate, imitate something, for example, like um, spider, <laughs> spider silk with this uh, either with synthetic biology or other uh, biotechnic technologies. So these are the, the kind of a five concepts that uh, this is not the whole picture, but at least it's, it's one approach that we can use to, to, to understand what is going on and what we should be doing. Um, some examples of these, these uh, topics. So um, uh, in the recent years, for example, the focus has turned on to how to develop new technologies to produce man-made cellulose fibers from, uh, from wood or other raw materials. And, and of course, viscose we have had over 100 years, so it is not new as such. But the idea is now to, and, and even Lyocell with the, with the closed loop systems we have had already decades. But in these, uh, in these projects, the focus is really on how to develop new technologies to, to more sustainable technologies, closed loop technologies that could be used for different kinds of raw materials and to produce, use these re renewable raw, raw, raw materials for textile fibers. And, and Finland has become, in a way, kind of a hub for in recent years for these for these developments. And um, there you can see some of the some of the names of the companies and projects which are going on. Very interesting. Uh, all others are somehow based on, on on dissolving these cellulose. Cellulose is the material that is is everywhere. It's in in plants, in in trees, in algae. It's 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 it, uh, it's one of the, it's in fact the most um, uh, abundant uh, organic polymer in the world. So it's, it is everywhere and, and it is there. But of course the question is where and how we take it and how we use it and what makes sense. And of course we need to take also care of the, of the biodiversity and our nature as such. But um, it's, uh, the spin of our technology is really interesting. It's, it's really new because they don't dissolve this cellulose with, with, not, with any chemicals like the, all the other, other uh, projects mentioned here do. Um, and of course, when we, once when we have the fiber, it can be used as, as any textile, uh, traditional textile material like cotton or viscose or, 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 or um, lyocell type of materials. Now that's, this is about the technologies, but then we have also this raw material selection is expanding. And what I've noticed that these two things are very often mixed, that for example, uh, this, this technologies, production technologies and, and the raw material selection are somehow blended. Uh, to clarify it, so that's why I wanted to talk a little bit separately of this uh, production technologies and then the raw material selection. And, and what is really interesting here that the idea is that maybe even more of the kind of the waste and, and side streams could be used in the future for, for this, uh, through these uh, new technologies. Uh, also algae, of course, different kinds of algae, agricultural wa waste, food waste, cotton waste. Um, for example, Infinite Fiber uh, Company in Finland is really focusing on using this cotton waste to recycle, to recycling the waste uh, chemically. So um, it is, uh, uh, I mean, there are projects with using, using dissolving hemp, using rice straw, whatever, which is currently not used. It could be used, but again, it does not only solve the problem to have these new materials, because we also need to design these uh, fibers and textiles so that they can be recycled for several times, if possible. Um, there are also new production technologies for synthetic fibers. And uh, for example, this, this, uh, this, this, this called this Naya, 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 maybe some of you have, who are working with textiles are, have already met it. 
it's uh, also made of uh, wood or, or cellulose based materials but it's it's more like uh, acetate type of type of uh, fiber um, there is quite interesting approach uh, how to make uh, materials out of uh, ceo2 so from air in fact by using using in this case it is uh, idea is that they are going to produce protein through this um, uh, very very uh, technical uh, processes but using air and, and ceo2 which is a big problem for, for the food, food food protein production but also that same idea can be there are projects exploring how to use that for textile fibers in the future and then there are these new biotechnological uh, uh, solutions like um, um, bolt threads already producing these uh, certain certain filaments and, and, and fibers with with bioreactors with using by using uh, biological systems. So those fibers could be in a way not grown but but produced with with the, by imitating biological processes in 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 a laboratory or co conditions. Uh, as all, also was mentioned, the problem of dyeing and, and, and dyeing of, of uh, textiles, it's causing plenty of problems uh, during the process. So this, that's one field that is uh, many, many projects, research projects and experimental uh, design projects are running currently. Uh, for example, how to dye textiles with uh, microorganisms, whether they are microbial or, or, or some kind of fungal fungal uh, elements <laughs> but in this case they both fung fungi and and uh, microbial of course they are living living um, creatures and in a way it's very fascinating that they could produce the the colors for for our textiles in the future um, an uh, other approach for the dyes is, of course, to go take a back a little bit backwards, take a look backwards, and uh, see what's happening in the field of natural colors, natural dyes. Um, this is an interesting research project ongoing with the uh, uh, dyes woad, which is kind of an indigo-like of a color, a plant that can be used to dye uh, textiles. And uh, this is this image is quite interesting combination of, of traditional dyeing process where this uh, cultivated dyer's woad has been used to give the color but it's also uh, using uh, these it's com these materials are in a way combination of hard and soft knits and uh, the hard parts have been uh, dissolved with certain um, liquids certain chemicals to make, to be able to combine hard and, uh, and uh, soft uh, materials in one piece. So, and, and it's again also a very nice uh, uh, um, example of collaboration because that's definitely something that is always needed. Uh, one way to maybe to give color to our materials and, and even textiles in the future might be these structural solutions where in fact there is no color like the butterfly wing there is there is no color but there is only this nanoscale structure and when the light hits the structure we can see the color so is this kind of uh, ways to, to produce to this kind of materials is also now going forward and then um, very nice uh, ex uh, experimental uh, samples already exist. Again, this is a nice example of collaboration that is really required to enable these this kind of uh, results. Well, and of course, we all have been wearing these masks nowadays and, and we have this uh, uh, been discussing what is safe and what is not and, and how they should be used and so on. There was a news uh, in May how these bio designers have had created these homegrown cellulose masks and this very, very fascinating project. And, and this brings in up the question, is this speculative design or is this research project or is it both? 
So what is really uh, interesting nowadays that there are plenty of plenty plenty of new ideas how to replace something or or, or recycle something, uh, how to make these bio-based alternatives, for example, for leather. So there are already commercial applications. There are first stage ideas that I have collected some of them, them here. The big question is, um, again, it's about the scaling, how these things can be scaled up, how durable they are in the use and how they could be recycled. So in a way, even we have these renewable um, raw materials, it's really challenging then to, to develop them towards materials that could be, for example, also recycled in the future. And that's how we sh should design in, 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 the coming, in the coming years. Uh, material designers seem to be the new design heroes nowadays and that's something that I wanted to talk about a little bit because it really bothers me now that we need all this storytelling and that's great. We need this, all these fascinating narratives I, which I've been also showing here. Uh, but uh, we, we need designers to give their face and speak for these issues. But what I want really to say that we also, this material development is quite slow and it's, it's to, to, to take it from the idea to the, to, the, to the real use. It's very slow and it's complicated process and it's always a collaborative process. So I would really see, I would love to see more and more of, of uh, people telling also the bringing up the background of their projects, not only that they did, I did, but we did. And the collaboration is super interesting to, of course, to take these things forward, but also to, to here are two, two comments from, from uh, people who are curating or, or writing related to this collaboration. And, and design is a very good partner. It can be a very good partner in these, these um, projects as well. Designers are usually taking quite a holistic look. On the other hand, the collaboration might be very challenging because where to find these, uh, the, where to find these um, partners? Oh, I did something, sorry. Uh, and uh, how to collaborate? That's a big question that many people, uh, are, many researchers, design researchers, for example, are focusing currently. And the approach of uh, scientists, material scientists and designers are very different. It can be very different. and, and it, it might be challenging <laughs> to find the ways to how, how to really make this happen together. Uh, designers like, like Tony Kao here is saying that designers love to work with a very broad spectrum and, and do some plenty of experiments. And in, in, but often scientists want to narrow down very early stage and, and focus on that. And that's why the collaboration, when we have these both aspects and both approach, approaches, is really uh, fruitful. This is an example also of the, our, the different languages that we speak when we come from the different disciplines. So, in fact, this is the same story told in two ways. So there is an, a scientific article, as you see on the left side, and there is the, the way how designers are sewing and ex explaining uh, these projects. So this is about the water repellent finishing, which was also uh, end result of, of, of uh, chemical engineers and, uh, and scientists and, and designers. But like you see, we as, I, I as a designer, of course, it's very easy to understand what is the message in the image. But to be honest, I have plenty of uh, colleagues nowadays who just, who just, uh, they, they can't understand the visual storytelling. So they need to have these, these uh, written descriptions and which are really like also highlighting and, and explaining what, what is happening and what happened. Uh, to a little bit wrap up, so this, this, about this collaboration issue is that we really need this, uh, like I said, it's not easy, it's, it, it's really, a, requires effort but it is needed and what is needed for the for the collaboration is this I just listed these issues here curiosity listening shared values collab uh, responsibility willingness if, if there's no willingness nothing happens we need these methods how to co-work how to co-learn we need to be interested uh, and um, 
we also need to respect each other. We need also shared funding. We need fair agreement and crediting of IPR agreements and crediting. And that's why I very often see that my colleagues from science, they are very strict that they always credit uh, also, also the designers if possible. But I, to be honest, very often I see that uh, colleagues are presenting, uh, design colleagues are presenting projects, but not telling the story and the, the, the people behind it. So I hope to see that more in the future. And on the chemical, on the, on the educational side, uh, this, this is the, sto the, the uh, project that I come from. So we are really trying to inspire young people, whether they are from fashion, textile, industrial design or, or whatever discipline to get interested in these uh, new materials and materials in general because many people don't know where their stuff comes from and if we want to make this uh, world more sustainable we definitely need to very urgently to 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 put more more uh, effort on knowing where materials come from how they are used where they go and so on so this is also about this these educational activities and courses it's to share, share the knowledge and inspire people and uh, take a take 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 a look on the on the for example our web page if you if you would be interested to see what is going on there. So that's that's my presentation and uh, thank you so much for inviting me again. And uh, this is to share the people who are, for example, part of the people uh, that are behind ion cell research. And this is only a small, small part of them. So it's, I want to thank them, but I also want to thank you for listening and, and all the best for the rest of the day. Thanks. Thank you, Birio. Can you stay online just for a very brief moment more? Um, there's a I question I, I caught from the audience, um, which, which rose attention is how much material research is, is actually based on industry input that you're doing in Alto, because there's a lot of material research going on. Uh, it is partly, uh, partly based on, on industrial, uh, uh, or co co collaborating with industry. For example, all these uh, fiber uh, issues, fiber product projects are, are usually there is company already involved or companies developing them. But, uh, but of course, it's also both ways. So there's plenty of um, new ideas that are coming up from the basic science, that there are technologies that could be used somehow, but then we need people who from industry and business and, and design to look at those uh, scientific results and, and make to, to kind of a translate them in a way, connect them into to these real life applications and so on. So both ways. Thank you. Thank you, Virya, for your time. Thank you. We move on. The following presentations are all from our members of the Fashion Seeds core team. So this consists of University of the Arts London, Politecnico de Milano, Design School Colding, and Estonian Academy of Arts. We start with UAL and the speech that is headlined, Fashion Design for Sustainability, a new foundation for fashion educators presented by Dillis Williams. She is the Director of Centre of Sustainable Fashion, Professor of Academic Leadership at the London College of Fashion, UL, and Dillis is supported by another member of the Centre for Sustainable Fashion, Nina Stevenson. So I hope they are online. Hi there, thank you. Wonderful. Thanks, Pirates. Thank <laughs> Dillis? <laughs> yes, thank you very much, Pirates. <laughs> Hi, okay, so I'm going to start with our presentation this morning. So sorry that we can't be there in person, but it's lovely to be able to connect through the wonder of technology. Um, Dillis is going to do some screen sharing, um, and I'm just going to do the first section of the presentation and then hand over to Dillis. Um, and thank you to Pilio for that really interesting opening keynote. Um, so today we will be um, introducing to you um, the Fashion Seeds Project. Um, and um, in, I wanted to kind of start by contextualizing um, the, fa the fashion industry, which builds on some of the comments that Rhett made um, in her opening statement this morning. 
Um, and then I'll be handing over to Dillis and Dillis will be talking in a little bit more detail around um, some of the key concepts that um, create the foundation for the work that we're doing through Fashion Seeds. So we have titled this presentation, A New Framework work for fashion design educators um, and I think that hopefully everyone in this room has an understanding of the magnitude of the fashion industry uh, in its current form. It's a globalized industry and it provides livelihoods to more than 50 million people. Um, it is, generates huge wealth um, and um, profit uh, creating over 2.4 trillion dollars um, each year. However, its practices are built on systems that are causing severe damage. We live in unprecedented times where economic prosperity forms the basis of our decision making. And this is at the expense of societal, cultural and environmental systems. However, the economic sustainability of the industry is also at risk. As fashion design practices don't take, don't take account of the diminishing resources upon which this dominant industrial model relies. So we know that the fashion industry requires new models of education and environments for innovation. We need revised course contents, new assessment methods, and the means for fashion educators to develop new knowledge and practice. So that brings us to Fashion Seeds. Fashion Seeds is a collaborative project. It um, is being conducted by um, a series of world leading institutions in fashion education, and it's spanning um, the course of three years. Uh, fashion Seeds seeks to develop a design-led framework for fashion design education in sustainability uh, that has the ability to impact transformational changes in the fashion system. And this is in response to the fashion industry's catastrophic damage to our environment and to rethink and improve design education in the light of the challenges posed by climate change, social well-being, cultural engagement and new economic models. So, through this new collaborative network of European fashion universities and using radical design-led approaches, the framework will include course content, methodologies, learning environments, teaching materials, sector engagement in a fashion education system that seeks to nurture graduates with uh, not only the knowledge about our fashion, our practices in fashion, but the skills, the capabilities and the knowledge for fashion design for sustainability. And we'll hear um, these elements in a little bit more detail through the subsequent presentations from our colleagues today. So through the three years of co-creation, the Fashion Seeds team have found new methods for sharing with each other and synthesizing best practice and radical thinking in research, teaching and learning, academic leadership, student experience, industry practice and governance. These conversations have also been extended to include a geographically diverse range of fashion system protagonists, including students, tutors, academic leaders, industry professionals, support organisations and policy makers. And through cycles of action and reflection, co-learning and co-creation, we are surfacing and connecting emerging practices, mindsets, tools and resources to initiate and scaffold the transformation of fashion education systems. And Fashion Seeds approaches fashion education as a system. That is a network of interrelated parts with a diverse range of participants and influences. By mapping existing sustainability initiatives in fashion education across a nested system of levels and participants, Fashion Seeds has been able to identify the fashion educator as a key lever for change in the capabilities and competencies of fashion students and graduates and therefore our industry practitioners. It's towards the tutor that we have focused our attention as we believe their role to be crucial in catalyzing change in the wider system. In the context of a climate emergency and increasing social inequalities, fashion design educators are recognizing an unprecedented need and opportunity to guide the values, knowledge and actions of students as they prepare for citizenship and livelihoods. So fashion design for sustainability teaching must prepare students to make change within an existing industry, as well as forge new ways of making a living through a future fashion system. This tension is something we have been acutely aware of through the project. So in reality, the ambition of Fashion Seeds is by, fashion, by summer 21 is to share a rigorous framework of knowledge and 
practice in the field that will be immediately applicable and relevant to a range of contexts. It's aimed at the educators and academic leaders of fashion education systems across our globe and will be presented as an online platform. Through this website, fashion educators and academic leaders will access this new knowledge in a curated, thoughtful and useful space. It will make available thinking, reflection and resources for those looking to make adaptations to existing curricula and those looking to radically reposition their teaching to place earth and equity first. It will offer space for design and reflection of both what we teach and how we teach. And underpinning the online resource are a set of key theoretical concepts and explorations for fashion design for sustainability. The how we teach fashion is explored through an understanding of our pedagogic practice. And I'd like to now hand over to Professor Dillis Williams, who will further present our work in this area. Over to you, Dillis. Thank you very much, Nina. Uh, and greetings, everybody. Just to echo what previous uh, speakers have said. I'm very sorry not to be there in the room, um, but I'm getting used to this new technology. Um, and it's great to have the opportunity to, to be part of Talent Design Festival. And, and it's a great uh, context for us thinking about our work in Fashion Seeds because as everybody I'm sure in the room and online knows, design uh, according to Cross is an inherent human capability. But how we actually hone those capabilities and skills into professional skills is really the realm of education. And what we do as tutors and what we do to help uh, as our own learning as well as the learning of our students is incredibly vital at these times. So through our research at Fashion Seeds, we have identified gaps actually in the what, how, why, and with whom of teaching and learning fashion. So I just want to touch very briefly on the why. It might seem obvious, but actually there are a number of layers to it. And then we'll talk quite specifically about the how of teaching and learning in the context of the threefold health crisis of our times that has already been referred to. Planetary, people, and societal health. We are all indigenous bipeds. So design education holds a unique role in imagining and realizing the possibilities of sustainability in action. So we've developed two areas for tutor consideration to support this creative ingenuity. It's actually part of the existential crisis of our times to actually understand what it means to be human in these times and what we actually are capable of We've created the greatest changes ever to climate through our own habits of thought as well as our actions. So pedagogies of fashion design for sustainability and scales of transformation are the two elements of the project that we're working on that I'd like to talk about. And to contextualize that, higher education, as we know, plays a vital part in four elements of, of, of a learner's ability to go out into the world. These are referenced by a number of different academic um, literature sources and theories, and they really focus around this idea of a vocational skill. We're all aware of the fact that education in fashion is about creating the skills and capabilities for autonomous livelihoods, to be able to make a living. It's about socialization, enabling learners to explore and identify their contribution in the world, who they are. It's about disciplinary expansion so that knowledge and practice relating to a field of study can be expanded, deepened and better understood. And then it is about transformation. The transformational aspect of education relates to the perception and consciousness of the learner. The epistemology, epistemology, epistemology sorry, and ontology of fashion design for sustainability as sustainability is an element, I would argue, that shapes all other parts of what a fashion education is about. And in art and design is a long tradition of exploring all of these ideas through the studio practice, through making, through tutorials, workshops, as well as through lectures. But the element of transformation occurs through a questioning of context. And that is something that is not necessarily deeply considered. And it's because design, whilst it's an activity that takes a situation and shifts it into another realm, it is unfortunately in tension with the fact that the current way of doing things, the accepted practice of what improvement means, is not deeply explored. 
the practices have changed towards necessary transformation of product service systems and perceptions, I would argue, is focused around our understanding of interbeing, to reference Thich Nhat Hanh. When we understand our interbeing with each other in nature, then our perception of all the other areas of education changes. In the words of Ai Weiwei, there is no beauty, no aesthetic judgment that is not related to how we look at the world. So maybe at the core of our, our challenge is actually our perception and changing perceptions. And educators sit in this tension between a duty of care of preparing students for employment, uh, for autonomous livelihoods, for fulfilling work within quite a short time span, maybe a three year BA course. It's still not long to be thinking about changing perception. And the ambition to nurture creatives to have the agency and resilience to transform the broken system that has been referred to already requires a new set of skills for the tutor. Obviously, we know that transformation is already happening. We have some great examples in businesses, large and small, of ways in which fashion is being reconsidered. However, the dominant fashion system is in need of a complete overhaul. The tension that exists between higher education institutions and uh, society and industry is because of the marketization of higher education and because the model of economic success is based on increasing cultures of consumption. Designers at the moment are tasked to create beautiful, desirable pieces to create perceived need, to overstimulate these customers so that they become pushers of product that does not do justice to the breadth of what education or what design is for. We find ourselves in a position of problem minimizing rather than consideration of the problem at hand. Focus is given to risk management too often in education and tutors are squeezed onto a focus of dealing with symptoms rather than causes. So if we are to realize the potential of tutors and designers, we need to move, as Manzini would say, from existence minimum to quality maximum. And as a personal, cultural, economic and social practice, fashion is incredibly well placed to be part of this necessary transformation of consciousness. From individualization and consumption as socially acceptable practice and habits of mind to interdependence, interbeing and care played out through the activities and relationships of attire. Fashion is how we identified ourselves and as such is a vital part of our ecological identities. So this quote here is quite a wake up call for all of us. Our role as tutors is to create the conditions for transformation. It's quite a, a a big ask for us to be thinking about coexistence with each other and nature. And as I said, fashion offers an amazing uh, human scaled opportunity to do this. And so we have looked at this idea of transformation. We've drawn on uh, literature from a range of different disciplines and looked at transformation across three important dimensions. Each of these dimensions is part of a, of a vital process. They're interdependent and all necessary. Our research also draws on education for sustainability, design uh, theory, fashion theory, the work of NGOs, the UN, and with specific reference to the Sustainable Development Goals. But if we are to consider these three dimensions of transformation, we need to be aware of what each of them are and to be able to recognize their opportunities and limitations. Awareness is about teaching about sustainability. It identifies problems, it recognizes them, and cares for those who are affected by them. It gathers, gathers evidence of the situation. It's a usual starting point for considering fashion design for sustainability and is a vital element. It does help towards species um, restoration. It does help towards understanding of our current context. But it must also be recognized that it is not enough on its own. The second scale of transformation is around ideation. This teaches for sustainability, it creates conditions for new materials, products and services that factor in cost to nature and the human cost. This level of change takes place within current worldviews. It's related to ad adaptation. Here I, I could reference the deep adaptation work of, of Bendel. And it's some really in incredibly ingenious work that is going on. It is very important, but it is not the whole story of change. 
a shift in our perception of what is a value is the third level of transformation. It teaches sustainability in action. Sustainability as a verb, as a way of being, as well as considering what we're looking at. It's played out in practices of teaching and learning that recognize and display our ecological identities. It is this consciousness of interbeing. It is an era of change which is massive and it will not happen overnight. However, we, if we are to move from an industrialized society committed to economic growth to a life-sustaining society committed to the health of the world, then we need to take this on. It is happening. We need to recognize its, its, its seeds, but we are very far from fully realizing it. So we have to really consider what elements of our current teaching and learning are at each of those three levels. So to activate these three scales of transformation, we have looked at how we teach. We've looked at the pedagogic practices of fashion design for sustainability. And we've developed eight pedagogies, drawn and adapted from the work of Centre for Sustainable Fashions pedagogies, from UN um, Education for Sustainable Development publications, from art and design pedagogies such as Aura and Shreve, and from our own practices and as designers and tutors. And critically, within the Fashion Seeds team, we have an incredible opportunity to co-learn and to undertake a co-inquiry with each other across geographic and disciplinary locations. Systemic thinking is the foundational pedagogy of this. It explores ways that we can reconnect the disconnect between humans and nature. It can be played out through self-reflexive practices, through systems visualization projects, through ecologies of garments, through deconstruction and reconstruction. Participatory learning, we've heard already um, about the idea of collaboration and the recognition that we're all learners and all tutors can be explored in a number of great ways. It does uh, involve sens sensibility though. You know, learner expectations are very different from different cultural locations as we've found out. But if we rethink our roles as guides and understand what it means to be a tutor to have deep listening and convening skills, then this pedagogic approach looks beyond traditional hierarchies. It recognizes what it means to have peer-to-peer -peer learning that allows representation of marginalized groups of different kinds of learners. Then we have future thinking. It's part of what design is about. However, by using techniques of speculative design, we can immerse learners in scenarios of not what just is predicted, but what might be. This example of Fashion Futures 2030 actually interestingly started off with a project that I developed with MA students for a public audience and has now actually become um, a, a toolkit and guide for people in industry um, and also for, for school aged children. So this notion of being able to think about the future and speculate together across different levels of teachers and learners is incredibly interesting and exciting. Informed decision making sounds, sounds obvious. We need to make sure that we base our thinking on verified data. However, verified data alone can be quite overwhelming, particularly in sustainability. So when we look at ways in which we can combine a values-led and knowledge-based approach, which I have spoken about in previous publications, is this idea of the double helix that can help us to take what we value and understand what knowledge and what data we need to be able to bring that to life. This helps us as tutors and as learners to be able to be a translator between data and action. Place-based learning is an area of particular interest to many of the team members. Whether we're thinking about user-centered design, community or nature-centered design, it involves not only getting out of the classroom, it also involves considering the ingenuity, the resourcefulness and the sufficiency of particular locations and its influence, its direct influence on learning. And as, as was previously talked about, it's about storytelling of place. It's not only about the resources of a place, it's about the cultures of, of a place. It's about the relationships between people in place. Creative critical thinking is another classic art and design uh, pedagogy. And I've just slipped one, haven't I? Interdisciplinary learning is actually the slide here. So interdisciplinary learning was also uh, spoken about earlier on, and it's often talked about, but actually it was great, uh, the introduction that talked about interdisciplinarity. What is critical to interdis interdisciplinarity is empathy. Unless we can understand the value that we each bring to a situation, until we can bring uh, 
uh, down hierarchies between different disciplines and how we can understand the mutual contribution of art, design, science, social science, hard sciences, then we will find it quite difficult to really work in an interdisciplinary manner. So interdisciplinarity is reliant on empathy. Then creative critical thinking, which again is another foundational art and design pedagogy, often explored through the crit, it needs to be expanded to ensure that the rigor of discussion really looks at the philosophical ideological beliefs and our understanding of what we want to sustain. A critical consideration of what living well actually means to different people in different cultures, different environments, from different perspectives. It challenges Western hegemony, it challenges traditional accepted modes of practice, and it creates alternatives through cycles of action and reflection. And finally, we realized through our conversations that maybe the most fundamental element of what fashion can bring to thinking differently is how we learn through making. But we decided that we needed to take it from being implicit to being an explicit, explicit pedagogy. How can we use object-based learning to really think and consider different elements of all these other pedagogies. And in the words of Joanna Macy and Johnson, it's part of the work that reconnects. It helps us to develop our inner resources through outer commitments. Inner consciousness and the ability to act on human creativity through outer displays of this understanding in the form of materials, products, and how we create, use, and value them. So just to conclude, Knowledge in action, teaching fashion design for sustainability thus switches the emphasis from teaching about the risks of what exists to, from a problem-based to a possibility exploring emphasis on guiding learners in imagining shapes and situations that are yet to happen. A sense of what isn't yet could be, in the words of Richard Sennett. So to reference back to the overarching question of the design festival, what kind of designers are needed in these times, we need designers who demonstrate sustainability in action. So designers with the power of resilience and the capacity to think autonomously in a world of complexity, but who really understand a perception of our ecological consciousness. So it's exciting, challenging times for all of us. And so in exploring this work through the Fashion Seeds platform, we're really looking forward to sharing it with you. The platform will go live in the middle of next year and it's now time for me to hand on to some other members of the, of the team who are going to be talking more specifically about other elements of the project. But I hope that these pedagogies can mean a, a, a way for us to engage curiously and creatively to develop skills that can make pieces that can change not only our habits of dress, but also our habits of mind. Thank you. Thank you, Dillis and Nina for the overview. We carry on with uh, Erminia Dietria's presentation. The doctoral researcher of Polimi will speak about the Fashion Seeds Benchmarking Report, the first report of the whole program, and a perspective of the fashion design for sustainability education in, in Europe. Erminia, are you online with yes. us? Yes, hi there. Hi there, I'm very happy to be with you, even if just virtually from Milan. I'll just start to share my screen. Yes, would you? Sorry. Uh, okay, there is a little bit of problem. Okay. I think uh, Dilis and Nina need to stop to share them their screen before I can uh, share with you mine. Okay. okay. Can you see it? One second. Yeah. Yes. yes, we can. We're trying to get the connection on. Next to turbulent times, we also have turbulent weather outside in Tallinn right now, so but it seems, Erminia, we have, your, we have your screen. We would be just very grateful to see you also for a moment so people know who is speaking to them. Can you see me? 
if you um, stop screen sharing for a second then oh yeah sorry hi there there she is, there she is in matching <laughs> background thank you Herminia and please right. carry on so today uh, I represent the Polymy team who had the task to lead the first intellectual output of the Fashion Seed project. And uh, with me, oh, sorry. Okay. With me, a part of the team, Professor Federica Batta, who is the Polymy team coordinator, and Professor Chiara Colombi, who is the team co coordinator. All the people involved in the Fashion Seed project from Polymy side are part of the Fashion in Process Research Collective. Fashion in Process is a multidisciplinary research collective of the design department of Politecnico di Milano. We develop knowledge and projects supporting and promoting positive and sustainable evolution of fashion and creative industries. Today, I will introduce you to the first element of the Fashion Seeds project, which is the creation and realization of a benchmarking report. The benchmarking report is the first and foundational intellectual output for the fashion seed, fashion, societal, economic, and environmental design-led sustainability project. It aims at describing the state of the heart of higher education programs and other agro qualitative didactic experiences of research centers and companies. It aims at elaborating possible direction and suggestion to design a fashion design for sustainability curriculum. About contents, the benchmarking report maps players active in the field in Europe and worldwide, identifies the best practices and reads current and upcoming trends in the fashion design for sustainability field. It also identifies gaps and possible points of intervention that can enable subsequent outputs to be of greatest benefit in realizing change toward sustainability within ACE. About methodology, this involves collection, comparison, and mapping following quantitative and qualitative analysis technique. It combines analysis of desk-based research with that of surveys and semi-structured interviews carried out face-to-face -face or long distance via digital communication channels with aides and companies. The questions were developed by the, all the teams to enable an overview of current fashion education system practices including research, teaching, learning, and courses relating to fashion, design, and sustainability. First of all, a desk, a desk research phase was conducted individually by each partner, taking into account three main considerations. First, the partner knowledge and experience based on academic study, teaching, networks, project, and other research and practice carried out by team members in fashion design for sustainability. Second, a desk-based research to complement quantitative and qualitative data gathering, including literature review, website review, and publication review. Third, a geographical division among partners to identify who are the main players acting in the field of interest in the European and selected non-European areas. Following this preliminary desk research, a case study methodology was applied to narrow down the very broad field of research. The study continued with two further phases. First, using a quantitative research methodology to uncover more, <coughs> more, sorry, more descriptive data on the activities of participants through surveys. Second, applying a qualitative research <coughs> methodology to address the character of the phenomena under examination, this through semi-structured interviews. The result of the described research activity allow us to draw a taxonomy of current practices and identify expectations, challenges, and needs within the fashion design for sustainability field. The research collected a total of 138 surveys respondents, out of which 75 from ACE and 63 from companies. Added to 44 semi-structured interviews, 22 from ACE and 22 from companies companies in Europe and worldwide. From the map, from the map you can see the, the geographical area covered by the research. 
and you can also see that there was a very po very positive interest in a response from the European area. About the higher education institution involved in this study, they present a significant number of design schools that offer fashion programs related to sustainability, not only in the design field, but also related to economics, management, technology, engineering, and humanities. About the industry respondents, they were heterogeneous and from young businesses. In fact, only seven companies in the study were established before 2000 and only 25 before 2010. These businesses are mainly small to medium sized businesses, which make up the majority of fashion businesses and often have the very first hand understanding of local market conditions, opportunities, and challenges. Comparing A's and company sustainability agendas, the data tell us that the issue of sustainability is a priority factor. From the data emerge that the A's responses indicate that the cultural pillar has a significant influence on them. A's self-assess as doing well or making progress in environmental and sustainability and social sustainability, while reporting less focus on the economic pillar. In contrast to this, there is the long-term ambition of A's to foreground a questioning of consumption and growth, which necessitate a connection between the cultural and economic dimension of sustainability. Through discussion among the partners, it becomes evident that the economic pillar is used by some, by some as the economic management of business, while by others as a critique of contemporary capitalism. On the other side, the industry responses to the pillar questions tell us that they prioritize their goal through the environmental sustainability, followed by social, cultural, and lastly by economic sustainability. This indicates, in line with the Hayes responses, that there is a need to explore ways to balance the four pillars of sustainability. There is a need to better understand perception regarding economic sustainability, especially in a context of the planetary boundaries and social equity. Industry also underline how there is a shortcoming between practice and theory. Most of the people interviewed from companies express concern about the dissonance between what students learn during the academic path and the practice and their practicing or working in real context. This is coherent with the action currently carried out by Hayes, where the main formats used to embed sustainability in the fashion curriculum are theoretical lectures. Also, from the data, emerge how there is need to expand the offer of sustainable courses along all the academic path. Today, as you can see from the visualization, there is a decrease in the academic offer as the academic level progresses. Through discussion among the project teams, it emerged how a more flexible path for master degree study would allow cross-disciplinary approach, making inserted sustainability in curriculum easier, as there is no need to, redes to redesign the whole structure. Furthermore, the students could thereby have more autonomy in designing their own path of studies. Or another option could be expanding the number of centers for research relating to fashion design for sustainability to support the academic practice. Almost all the Hayes developed a collaboration with the industry, but not vice versa. Also, the collaboration between company and Hayes tend to be short or standalone cases. These collaborations are prevalent seen as an opportunity to challenge the current practices, but very few respondents consider impact on industry as a key aspect of success. This suggests that this might be seen to be beyond the control of actors in the academic partnership. There is a misalignment between academia and the industry in recognizing the mutual collaboration, and this is assumed to be determined by difference in practice, pace, and stakeholder expectation. In, in fact, there is an evidence that academic industry relationships are considered extremely effective for the businesses that do undertake them. This is due to the knowledge sharing, the new ideas development, commitment from researchers, and long term result and impact on industry. This suggests that there is a need to find ways to connect, enable, and support co-learning and knowledge, knowledge exchange between A's and businesses. A's need to expand their expectation in order to further explore how people are establishing connection between industry and academia. Topics that concern industry could be explored by A's as a space to attract collaboration. 
This benchmark report informs the next phases of the project, where the team will be developing a framework for fashion in education for sustainability, a design, designing a learning user repository, teaching tools, and a future skill foresight analysis. The presented finding will inform the teamwork in the following five aspects, connecting and co-learning, deepening knowledge, bridging thinking into doing, creating a shared and empathic understanding, and transformation. About connecting and co-learning, this starts with the project team who act as a microcosm of the larger network of his involved in teaching and learning fashion design for sustainability. These happen across multiple disciplines, domain, level, and location. From the data emerge as an ag interest and engagement in teaching in fashion design and sustainability is already present. The study covers a range of courses collectively representing a holistic view of the fashion system with design, economic, humanity, fine arts, technology, and engineering being represented. There is a need to explore how and where these disciplinary approaches intersect, cross-reference and conform each other, either directly or not. The next phases of the project will extend and embed this engagement. About deepening knowledge, the project engaged in a critical discourse regarding fashion, this is based on a, an understanding of sustainability as a natural base, social equity center, culturally engaged, and economically enabled set of processes, practices, and relationships. This report evidences how holistic engagement in sustainability by a range of ways which affirm to embed all the seven pedagogic principles in their, program, in their teaching practices. At the same time, the findings identify a gap between interest, engagement, and activity in teaching, learning, and research, the, as there is a misalignment between teachers who want to engage in sustainability and teachers who are already doing it. There is a need to explore ways in which to enhance research lab teaching, with special reference to ways that have already established multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary structure, such as Institute or Center for Research, education and uh, develop on, development on sustainability practices. About bridging thinking into doing, there is a large proof of the existence of phase and industry connection, partnership and network. This is clearly evidenced in the report, as well as the gap in academia and industry partnerships. The next phase of the project will develop ways in which ACE can enable the development, development and application of new ideas that positively change industry practices. It will explore ways in which ACE can co-create and change the industry, at the same time maintaining their, their distinctive position outside the commercial practices. About creating a shared and empathic understanding, this is about recognizing the constraints and opportunity in different communities of practice across academia, but also between academia and industry. This involves a range of skills and competencies, not least listening with open mind, clear communication, and a gentleman reflection. There is a need to recognize that there will be a range of different understanding regarding fashion and sustainability. So there is the need to create clarity and promote open discussion. For this reason, there will be a, there will be a glossary and a lexicon term that will be created and related to the project in philosophical, practical, technical, and disciplinary terms. Fashion Seeds seeks to use radical design-led approaches to develop a holistic framework to embed sustainability into fashion design and into higher education. This ambition and important task involves a process of transformation. This is about transforming out of an outmoded education system, which is in part completed in the current climate emergency Due to, due to its prioritizing of economic growth over environmental and social prosperity. This action is coherent with the highest ranking think topics related to Hayes' future goal as consumption and growth, design research, amplifying public understanding, deepening social cultural change, and deepening business and politics topics. All these listed ambitions are in line with the environmental and social crisis of our time 
but are far from, are far from the reality of current commercial practices. From the analysis of the benchmarking have emerged the different critical issues on which we can and must work in the future. Academia can play a key role as a major asset to spread awareness about sustainability and embed a holistic approach to its pillar for the fashion design for sustainability sector. In conclusion, there is an increasing need for the academia to be in line with the current times, to be able to identify and codify the pattern of change and transmit knowledge and training to companies. This could happen through the formation of the new workforce of the sector to guide a positive change in this period of transition toward a more sustainable paradigm. Thank you. Thank you, Erminia. Um, we had a little bit complicated connection right now, but I hope you got several details. If something interests you a bit more, you can Google for fashion seats and you will find the benchmarking reports available on the partners' homepages, including Estonian Academy of Arts. So very easy to find. But next is Professor of Fashion and co-head of MA in Design and Crafts at ECA, Julia Walle Noronha. And um, she's going to present the framework for fashion sustainability education. To Julia, you are there. Yes. Hi. Hello. So the screens are yours. Thank you, Philip. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. I'm very, very happy to see such a large number of participants, both physically and online. I think it gives us a very, a very good sense of, um, of knowing that what we're doing is, is right and that it's also needed. So I will share my screen with you. Just a second. Okay. All right, can you all see me? The screen? Yeah. All right, so as Spirit said, my name is uh, Julia Vade Noronha, and I am part of the ECA team for the Fashion Seeds project. Um, and today I'm going to be talking a little bit about a framework for design led education in fashion sustainability, which is part of the work package tool in this project and that ECHA was, was leading. Um, so I'm going to divide my presentation today in four parts. First, is starting from thinking about what do we need for implementing fashion design for sustainability in education. Uh, then moving to how do we do, so how do we, especially us, the partners uh, in the project, have been practicing this. Um, then present uh, this brief uh, framework proposal, so what we have uh, kind of come to the conclusion with, that it's the, the grounding basis for, for developing further the platform and how everything is going to come together within the, the final outcome of the project. And then I'm going to pre present also very quickly it's something that we're calling the course development cards, which is an exercise of employing the framework proposal into the development of a tool for, for fashion educators. Okay, so starting from what do we need? But before I get to the big uh, idea of what do we really need for, for employing fashion uh, education for sustainability, I would like to start with a little um, history of fashion and sustainability. So, of course, the term has been quite popular in the past couple of decades, and we may think that's something that is very recent. But actually, a lot of designers have been dealing with this from the, as early as the 60s already. And here we have example from Vivian Westwood, which was part of the, the punk movement, and she was already using uh, upcycling in her collections and also rethinking the ways that we, we deal with the clothes that we wear, which is something that is also very important when we're talking about sustainability. And another example that uh, probably some of you already know as well is uh, Catherine Hamnett, who was, she was using a lot of these statement t-shirts to make big protests about big, big questions in, in both social and also ecological uh, issues. And then when we move a little bit further on, the, the discourse reaches the academia in the late 80, the late 2000s, uh, especially in 2008, when both Kate Fletcher and Sandy Black 
they published their books on fashion sustainability. And this was something that it was actually very new for us in, in academia. But how the scenario looks today is actually very, very different. It's extremely plural. We have people from all over the world publishing all kinds of languages and thinking of sustainability from a very wide number of uh, dimensions as well. So it's, it's really great that it has, it has grown so large and today it became such a plural field as well. But then when we think about fashion education and sustainability, fashion, sustainability and education, the scenario is a little bit different. We do have a few publications and a few resources for us to use, but they are still quite rare. And, and then the fashion seeds comes to really try to, to fill this gap by proposing something that it's, it's easily accessible and it's reachable and can be used by people from all over the world as well. Even though we do have this uh, focus initially on European Union, of course, because this is a EU funded project, we would like that this, this platform can also reach people not only within the EU, but also beyond these uh, geographical borders. All right, so what do we need for implementing fashion design for sustainability in education? Um, Erminia has already told quite a lot about what we have been doing in, in the benchmark, benchmarking report and some of the findings that we have. So the way that we started this work package uh, for the framework was to start to look again and have a revision of these findings of the benchmarking report. And here I just try to highlight some of the key points that we have identified, which seem to be quite relevant for us when we're trying to build this framework. So the first, uh, and this has been mentioned very many times today already from the first part of the, of the presentations and throughout the second part as well, which is intensifying industry and academic collaborations. So there is a clear issue of communication here as well. Uh, and we need to understand ourselves better. We need to create better bridges that will, will make uh, institutions and, com and companies to, to reach each other in, in an easier way. Also, there seems to be a, 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 the need for a better balance between theory and practice, that the students can actually understand that theory can, can go very well along with practice. And this is somehow reflected also on how, how few, uh, uh, how much more we have of bachelor programs than masters and PhDs as well. And the PhDs, they, they have until very recently been extremely theoretical. And only in the past, let's say, 10 years, they have to, started to become and to, to implement more practice into them. So this is something that we really need to, to increase as well, this, this balance between theory and practice. Another thing is about deepening knowledge on sustainability topics. And this is something that it's, uh, it was very interesting to hear from the tutors that they feel that they lack information about sustainability and sometimes they don't feel that they are able to, to put the message forward. Of course, um, Sometimes they may, they may state that they, are, they need more, more tools, but sometimes they also state that they need more time. So, so being, being able to, to access the information, not only in different languages and in different formats, but also being, having things readily available is very important in the education as well. Another thing is about promoting more knowledge on materials and having more critical perspectives, which has also been very discussed already by Delis, Nina, and also in Pidio's presentation. Uh, and then about rethinking this disciplinary boundaries, which is also something that uh, this both present, previous presentations have, have stated. Um, yeah, we in fashion, we have all, always received quite a lot of input from outside, right? So all the other fields of knowledge have been looking into us and contributing to our field. But now fashion has grown to such a, such a cons consolidated field that we can also start to reach out to other fields and try to, to, to bring fashion to other fields as well, creating perhaps new fields of knowledge. And the last one is encourage actionable forms of actually transforming the fashion system. So allowing that the students have a more actionable, uh, more actionable ways of, of implementing their ideas in the fashion system. Okay, so those were some of the key points that we start to work with when we're thinking about building our framework for fashion education sustainability. And then uh, one thing that we found also very interesting to bring up is uh, the idea of how, how an institution should be structured so we can have a more effective model for implementing such a thing. And, and the literature suggests that um, when you have the, the sustainability coming from above, meaning from the institution itself, it's much more easy for, for, the, for the different policies to, to be spread throughout the institution into reach research and education. 
So we can think, for instance, not only uh, that the, an institution has sustainability within their, their strategy, but also that they, for instance, are, are thinking about uh, gender um, issues within when they're hiring someone or thinking about issues of uh, respect to different cultures and plurality or let's say the way that they sort their trash or if there's an incentive to, to public transportation in their staffs and, and students. So all these, these things, they may help creating a better environment to make the, the fashion design for sustainability environment flourish. But as uh, we have seen in the benchmarking report, the reality is extremely different. Most of the institutions, they have very little individuals who are really trying to push their ideas forward to the rest of the institution, happening in a bottom-up approach. And here we're not saying that one way is better than the other, but just to try to to present that the reality is actually quite plural and that within the fashion seeds, we have to be able to, to help not only the, the institutions that already have a very clear policy uh, understanding of sustainability, but actually also those that, that have only very uh, single individuals who are trying very hard to, to implement changes in their curriculum and their courses. So. So trying to put it in short, um, and I think it's also very similar to what uh, Dillis was saying at the end of their, of their presentation, is that implementing fashion design for sustainability involves big changes in actions, in practices, in knowledges, and also in belief systems. So it's not only by teaching uh, students uh, on fashion and sustainability, but also on a series of different practices that we should be thinking about. All right, so how do we do? Um, when we were trying to, to bring this uh, framework together, we started looking also outside and, and trying to, to raise some examples that could be very interesting to share. But then we stumbled upon uh, a certain issue, which is the issue of um, copyright. Uh, so one thing that seemed to be extremely important for us is that people who are coming to our platform and to access and make use of it, should, should see something that it's very flexible and open-ended. Because as we said before, there are all sorts of, of institutions uh, working with it. And we have to, pro to propose material for them that is going to be quite flexible, but, you know, being a very big institution that already has uh, sustainability quite implemented, or it's a very small institution that is trying to make their first steps towards sustainability. So we should be able to cover them more. And another very important thing is about open and open source and the matters of availability and visibility. So because of that, we ended up looking a lot more inside ourselves because we realized that we, as, as a group, as a team, we already had quite a lot of very interesting projects and very interesting proposals to work with. So we did a very uh, lengthy partner report. So each of the, the institutions we generate, we produced these this reports that included uh, first a description of our institutions, but also uh, examples from course units and, and if we had, for instance, an MA program or a BA program. So in the end, we collected around 30 course units from all the partners and also one complete MA program. And here I'm going to introduce to you just a few examples from ECHA and one example from UAL. So I'm going to start with this sustainable design is a course that has been running for about 10 years now. It's within the MA level led by, led by Red House and Harry Mora. And uh, usually in this course, they establish a connection with another entity. It could be a company or it could be some other kind of institution as well. And the students are displaced from the environment of ECHA to somewhere else. And then there they try to, to map what kind of waste that, that company or that institution is producing and rethink how they could use that waste to produce useful new design objects. Um, and the example that we have here is from last year uh, where the students went to India to spend two weeks there at the Aruna factory in Chennai. And they produced a series of objects. So, some of the, the pedagogical principles that we're using here are place-based learning, learning by doing, and informed decision-making. Another course which is very interesting is the Ethno course that has a history of 70 years, not 17, but seven zero. So it's a very, very 
long uh, history of a course that has been focusing on on thinking about um, Estonian ethnographic culture and how this relates to fashion. So this course is in the BA level, it's led by Pirit Pupar. And um, Pirit brings the students to, to a very different environment in the countryside of Estonia, together uh, in an archive, where the students see not only the archive, which holds a series of, of artifacts, especially in, in knitwear and also uh, woven pieces, but they are also in touch with the nature around the archive. So the students are doing things which are very hand-on to try to recover some indigenous knowledges that are very present in their culture. Um, and here we have the example from two years ago where they were using natural dyes from the fields surrounding the, the space that where they were located. And here we're focusing basically on place-based learning and learning through making. And what we think is also very interesting is that the students they learn not only about, uh, for instance, dyeing with natural dyes or uh, traditional weaving and knitting uh, techniques, but they also grow a certain reconnection with their, with their ori origin. So they may go to reach out to their grandmothers and grandfathers to ask, ah, how did you do this in the past? So it's something that is also very interesting how they reconnect with the previous generations as well. And then another course that ha also has a longer history at ECA and has been changing a little in the past couple of years is the Futurology course. Um, and then here we ask the students to propose uh, products and services that are thinking about solving issues, current issues or future issues in the fashion industry. And how the students do that is that from the beginning of the course, they start taking notes on their own wearing practices. And, and from that, they understand what are the possibilities that may emerge in the future. And they use that to inform their decisions on what kind of products and services they are going to design. So here we're thinking quite a lot on critical thinking, informed decision making, but also on futures thinking. And then another example from UAL is the MA Fashion Futures, which is a whole MA dedicated to sustainability, which is something that is very rare and it's very important for us to, to look into as well. So within the MA, they, they are basically covering all the, the pedagogical principles that we believe are important to implementing fashion sustainability in education. Okay, so after looking at everything that we have been doing and also all the work that we, we had at the beginning with the, with the benchmarking report, we started with a, with a framework proposal. Of course, we're very much interested in keeping with the pedagogies that we have started looking into and things that we already have experienced in practice. But then added to that, we propose that we enmesh the four pillars of sustainability to the scales of transformation that you have also heard um, Nina and Dilis talking about. So our framework is basically this enmeshing of the four pillars, social, environmental, economic, and culture, together with the, four, with the three scales of transformation. But then we thought that it would be also interesting for many uh, tutors and institutions that would like to give a more general idea of what sustainability is, to include this general level, which is where you know, we're basically bringing everything together in a more general sense. So this framework, it could be used, for instance, uh, to think of activities. It could be an activity that lasts, I don't know, five minutes to 30 minutes, but it could also be uh, a framework to use in, in course units, in programs, like for redesigning a whole curriculum or in lectures and et cetera. Um, and this is exactly the framework that we have been using to design uh, the first tool that we have been using at the, the Fashion Seeds. Uh, which is called the course development cards. And, and this is something that I think that also we as tutors, we realize that we need something to support um, the ways that we are redesigning our curriculums to, to better fit and to, to, to better inform students regarding sustainability. So the course development cards are a series of uh, cards and, and they are divided into these um, four basic pillars, but also the general pillar and they, they, they propose to enable prototyping of activities. And activi by activities, I mean, as I said, it can be a very short activity, but it can be a whole curriculum in a, in a program. Um, so we would also like to provide some extra guidance, not only you know, talking about the pillars and what are the topics that are interesting, but also to provide them with some literature. And these this, uh, course development cards, they will also 
reach out to the whole platform, the whole Fashion Seeds platform to link the different uh, stuff that we have there that can, that can help tutors to start producing something else. Um, so something that for us was very important, as I said before, is that they are free of easy access via the, the Fashion Seeds platform, and they, they can actually encourage the implementation of fashion design for sustainability within the different institutions. So with this, it's the end of my talk today. I thank you very much for your attention, and we will continue with one more presentation from our side. Thank you, thank you Leo, for making it very easy and clear, I think, to the whole audience what they, are, what they can expect quite soon. Um, going to switch to our last presentation today, and um, our colleagues from, uh, colleagues from Colding, Vibeke Riesberg, uh, Associate Professor of Textiles, and Louise Ravenlock, Assistant Professor, um, are going to look more into practical actions in order to give sustainability in education a boost. So the speech is entitled Tools and Activities for the Fashion Seeds Platform. So Vibeke and Louise are already there and, and ready to speak to you. Yeah. Hello everyone. Hello everyone. Can you see us and hear us? Julia? Yes, very well. <laughs> Good. Um, we are very happy to uh, give a presentation to the audience in Tallinn and to everybody online. We will uh, now share our screen with you and our presentation will be in two parts. First, uh, about the, the development of activities for the platform and then a small uh, exercise or activity where you will be active as audience, both uh, in Tallinn and the online. So please have your mobile phone near you because you're gonna use it in the last part of our session. We will now switch to our presentation. Can we see us go to Julia? And, uh, we can just check to you. Julia, can you see our screen? Uh, no, I can't. Uh, but if you want, I can I can share from my side. If that's better. Um, Otherwise, no, 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 I will no. log on to my. Uh, I will participate now in my name. And okay. uh, I can hear it from here. Yeah. Okay. No, what do? Yes, now I can see it. <laughs> Thank you. Just Sorry for the for the confusion. Please, we are seeing a black screen. Let us know if this is what we should be seeing or not. Just try one more time to share the screen. Now we can see it. Yeah. And you can hear us? Yes, we can hear you. Oh. 
Okay. Um, we will. Um, we're just trying to get organized here our side. Sorry for that. Um, as uh, we said, we are uh, representing the team from Design School Calling, and we will talk about tools and activities for the Fashion Seeds platform. Um, first of all, we will give a, a little background of uh, why Design School Calling is having this uh, particular uh, task uh, in, or we're leading the task in the Fashion Seeds project. We have been working with tools and development of tools at the schools for quite some years. And uh, here we will present uh, three of the latest tools. Uh, the first one was the Sustainable Design Cards, which was developed by Karl-Marie Hessling and Ulla Rebil. They are used for teaching sustainability in an interdisciplinary setting, but can also be used in a disciplinary setting. They are general and holistic. They are also open source and they were published in 2017. They were developed with students and companies and they're used by learners and educators internationally. The other tool that was developed here is uh, called Gain Power, and uh, it was developed together with uh, companies mainly. Uh, it is about sustainability uh, for strategy and in business. It's empowerment tool uh, for decisions within a company. We have experience with more than 800 companies in continuing education, and we have also implemented this tool when we teach um, design and business uh, to our design students. It's also open source. The third one is called Material Pathways and is the latest one. It has just been launched. It's specific about materials, but also holistic. It's open source and also uh, here online at our website. It's developed with students and to be tested with companies in the near future and be used in education. And uh, we will return to uh, uh, the benchmarking report very shortly and say that, of course, the um, activities uh, we are developing is based on insights, both from desk research on existing tools and literature and on the benchmarking report, where we could see that very few companies and Hayes are using what are already existing of tools. We also did uh, tutor surveys. It was a UAL, conducted by UAL, uh, which showed that few tutors have implemented tools in their teaching. In order to um, get to the end user, so to speak, although Fashion Seeds is made for tutors, we also think it's important that the end users, the students, uh, to hear what they would like to have uh, or learn uh, within their study. So we uh, did 111 surveys and 25 individual uh, interviews across the four institutions. And five common themes occurred. What was with, what they wished for in their education. They want clear progression in sustainability education embedded sustainability in formal requirements, meaning that in all the projects and assignments, there should be a formal requirement for uh, focus on sustainability on various levels. Activate and internalized knowledge was another thing because they, they are presented to a lot of knowledge, but how to activate it and really put it into their own projects was a big desire. They also want to apply a theory uh, to design, how to do it in practice, how to teach them that. And then they uh, wish for coming out of school and into the world to actually do something with all this knowledge about sustainability. We identified more than 70 tools, which are general tools uh, for uh, designers and companies. 
And out of those uh, more than 70 tools, we identified, I think, 25 specifically for fashion and textile. We went through all these and uh, we uh, selected 20 that are all open source because we think it's very important that what we build the activities and connect the activities to should not uh, be um, paid uh, access, but to be open source and free. When we are creating the activities, they are um, created uh, according to the four pillars perspective, meaning the environmental, economic, cultural, and social perspective. Here you see an, um, uh, the first uh, analysis of uh, one of the existing tools, which we uh, refer to also uh, in the exercise we will do with you at the end. Fashion Revolution that has a long record uh, for making outstanding educational material, specifically about the social uh, conditions of, of workers. So you can see how we have uh, presented um, the, this pool of knowledge with the many pages into a very short form in order to encourage teachers to go to the platform and find more, uh, um, more teaching materials. Um, and this is of course just a draft. This is not the way it's going to look on the platform. Then we were testing how to activate knowledge and integrate to practice. Here it's in a workshop with tutors um, and the activity is called material scaling where we are discussing notions of value in textiles. Textiles can be regarded in many ways, both from an economic perspective, from a social perspective and from environmental and cultural perspectives. So here uh, the discussion is not to find a right answer but to have a dialogue about uh, according to what project you are doing, where should focus be or many focuses. So the conclusion of uh, this research has been that we have many good tools, many, many, many have created great tools, but we need to activate them. Also, there have been uh, researchers writing about uh, tools and analyzing tools before us. And one of them is Anya Connor Prep that points out that while there are many tools available, they do not sufficiently aid tutors and learners in activating the knowledge embedded in the tools. So that corresponds with also what we found in the benchmarking report. An evaluation of the tool sustainable design cards found that tutors were asking for exercises, templates, supporting slides, help to select for sub themes or progression. So those are some of the, the keys that uh, we have also looked into for uh, develop, develop activities. Here you see a first draft of the Fashion Seeds uh, platform, the backstage. Of course, you will not see this when it's getting launched, but it's to give you an idea of the complexity of how to build these uh, links between a lot of different knowledge um, that is accumulated for the platform. Here we will uh, only look at uh, the tools uh, section, which is, uh, in, uh, is placed on the, the right hand side of the box. And here is, uh, you can see even deeper in the structure, how tools uh, are connected to course unit cards uh, and activities and literature and so on. So activities we see as a kind of tools that are connecting existing tools, merge digital and physical, break down complexity, bridge theory and practice, make sustainability tangible and support holistic active learning. Also work in progress is the, the layout for the Fashion Seeds uh, platform, but here we are front stage and you can see again a first draft of how is the web page going to look like when you're looking at uh, case studies, for instance. And also uh, the, the page where we're looking at activities 
where you will uh, be able to scroll and uh, get all the, the activity uh, information. An example of uh, the, the activity can you this one? Is, um, is called wardrobe studies or wardrobe stories. We have done a lot with what wardrobe studies uh, in um, design school calling. So this is uh, a description of um, a full description of an activity that you can see uh, the lengths of. Uh, it, it could be, be one hour or half a day and it is connected to the social and cultural pillar. It can be an individual activity, a group activity, or it can be artifact material driven. And the activity mode is to comprehend. Output would be a visual presentation of findings and insights. And also you get a, a link to other activities within the learning repository and references on what is this uh, activity built of literature and other tools. So the activity in itself is about what is your favorite garment and why is it a favorite piece? And then you can see how the procedure goes on in steps, how we have an introduction, an individual um, time for individual study, and groups of two students that will discuss their findings and then a plenary session. And uh, these activities are developed so they could work both individually, but they can also be combined uh, within themes. Uh, as Vibe could just showed on the screen of, of how uh, one activity linked to other activities. Uh, some activities are also created uh, to draw attention to these already existing, existing uh, open source activities, um, which in this case is a fashion revolution, which we have been inspired uh, by uh, to, for this activity in the, this workshop. Um, here we're not able to do uh, this activity of the wardrobe stories uh, with you since uh, this requires a wardrobe and a whole other setting. So today we have been, um, been developing a, an activity especially for this event just to showcase um, how uh, these activities could work. So um, but this activity that we will present today will still be uh, in the link of um, garment use. So uh, we hope that all of you will take uh, part in this uh, hopefully fun uh, activity. And um, to do so, you will need two things. One is uh, a piece of garment that you're wearing today. And another one is your smartphone uh, with online access. And uh, as you can see here, um, the, the activity we call the garment uh, uh, label activity, and it has to do with these informations that you can find inside, inside your, your clothing. So, uh, and if, if you somehow cut it off or you cannot find it, uh, if it's placed in a rare uh, place inside your garment, which doesn't suit for, for, uh, for, uh, for this session, then you can, um, can uh, use your sensibility and, and touch to, to guess um, for these informations. So, um, the next thing is that, uh, that we will collect these insights that you will find inside your garment. And we will do that by using this Kahoot tool that is online. Um, so uh, to do this, you will need to, uh, to open the kahoot.it or .com in your, in your phone browser. And you will see the screen, uh, or actually you will go to the, to the top right corner where you can find the play function. Uh, and then you will um, access this Kahoot um, where you can enter the game pin for this specific game. And uh, while you will find your phone and find the Kahoot.com, uh, I'll just... 
eta.com. You can, um, I will switch the screens so, um, so we can go to the, to the game instead. Me on the on the jolly uh, music. Yes, we can do it. Great. So now you will enter the pin that you see in the top, and here you can also access the nickname for for this game. So loud. for letting us know. So, and as uh, for those of you who maybe not have uh, tried this Kahoot uh, game before, uh, you will see different answers throughout the game. We have five in total. And, um, and there will be different options for answering, um, and both the questions and the type of uh, answer options you will find uh, here on the screen, and uh, you will answer with your phone. So, and th for those of you who are already registered and have your phone uh, yeah you could uh, use your time to find out should it be this piece of clothing or should it be another one that I should use for this game it's up to you. Can you hear me now? Yeah, now it's okay. Thank you. But thank you for letting us know. It's so important with these technical elements. Uh, and now we are trying on a new format that either Vivica or I have tried before. But we saw this an, as an option to, uh, to share uh, these answers uh, all together. So uh, it seems like we are ready to go. So uh, good game. So we can see there's a huge uh, overweight of production in China, China uh, in regards to these clothing that are um, participating today with us. Really interesting to see where, where things are coming from. So ready for the next question. Thank you. 
interesting to see the variations of, of fiber content. And here you can say that, that this blend of fibers, it's quite broad, but, but gives also an idea of what would it take if we actually need to um, reuse the fibers in, in our clothing and what is, um, what is optional then. So we continue to the next question. So I think some of you have tried it before, otherwise you are just rising with the, with the, within the game. Super great with all these answers and that you want to take part of it. And um, what you can say about this product information of, of how this is a way for, for the companies to also uh, enlarge the, the uses of how to take care of their garment uh, and also for the life of the garment. This was a more tricky one, uh, both in participating, but also in, in uh, what it requires uh, for these different types of uh, garment care.
So thank you for for participating uh, in this uh, open question as well. Um, it's really interesting to see what kind of information uh, you would like to have, whether it's exactly uh, something about the design and the thoughts behind it, or if it's something about the, the supply chain, uh, or it's a more uh, general things about washing, ironing, and dry cleaning information. And yeah, there is as well uh, companies working with uh, naming the garment uh, after the one who has produced it. The hands it has been through uh, during the time of production. So, but is, this is a game. And uh, just to um, round it off, uh, we will have uh, this small podium um, <laughs> joy of, uh, of the participants, uh, since uh, there has only been one question uh, that you could actually answer uh, wrongly. <laughs> and I can see it has been Julia. And Julia, you have maybe also uh, been teething a little bit since you were that's in the test unfair. round. <laughs> <laughs> but that's perfectly all right. So, yeah, thank you for, for taking part in this game. I'll just go back to our presentation uh, before finishing this uh, off. So yeah, what, what, we, um, what we want to draw attention to with this exercise is that we want to um, underline how the designer uh, or the design of the clothing has a direct effect on sustainability. Uh, with these five questions, uh, we want to outline different topics within sustainability, uh, direct, uh, directions that the designer uh, and clothing brands need to consider in the process, process of designing uh, design development. Whereas uh, CSR and sustainability concern social responsibility of production and working conditions. Um, design choices and sustainability has an influence on environmental footprint of material functions and aesthetics. Product information and sustainability also influences the environmental sustainability of the garment. Here, the clothing brands has a responsibility to inform the users how the garment is cared for in the best way to ensure a long lifespan of the garment's function and aesthetics. At the same time, the garment label can be seen as a means uh, to educate users for more sustainable maintenance of clothing. Therefore, the designer has an important voice in bringing front, uh, forth more sustainable fashion, not only within their own design process, but also in the life of the garment being worn and cared for by their users. The learning activities uh, for the Fashion Seats platform has, has been developed uh, to raise discussions inside and also outside the classroom to support the students' reflection and actions of how to create the future fashion system with more sustainable perspectives. So uh, thank you. This was uh, the words from, from our side here in, in Culling. Uh, also saying hello from, from Karen Marie and Ulla uh, in the team of Design School Culling. Thank you, Vibeke and Luis. Um, we're having a little break now for five minutes, although I think on the screens we will have a logo saying 15, but imagine that this is a little bit longer. Um, get yourself a cup of coffee, cup of tea, and return in, in five minutes, please, because at 10 minutes past two, we will start with the discussion panel. 
Thank you.